If you want to do well at city planning, it helps to stack the deck. We're taking a quick peek at Concrete Jungle. The first thing you need to understand about Concrete Jungle is that while it may look like a city builder or city management game, it's not. I've seen most of the criticism for this title come from people who played it expecting one thing, but instead got something completely different. City building or planning is really only used as a theme, not mechanically. Instead, this is a puzzle game, and a card-based puzzle game at that. Cards represent different buildings, and each building serves a different function throughout the city, making property more or less valuable as well as adding to the economy. Concrete Jungle uses many ideas from Coal Powered Games' previous title, Mega City or Mega City HD. It's the same basic concept, but much more in depth with new cards, locations, characters, and game modes thanks to a Kickstarter campaign in 2014. The goal of the game is to make each column in the current puzzle's grid equal a specific amount of points indicated in the orange area in the upper right of the screen. Once that happens, you'll be able to bank those points and move on. But unlike in Mega City, the game isn't over if you find yourself in a position where you can't make a column equal the number you need. There's a live system that you can use to remove bad columns that you can't do anything with. You only get so many lives to use as you play, but you can earn more back so you don't have to be super hesitant to use them if you specifically need to. There are about three or four different game modes you'll come across in Concrete Jungle, and most of them play this way, but things do change up when you head into Versus mode. The game's single player consists of both solo and versus game modes and slowly teaches you the game as you go. It introduces new new ideas on a level by level basis, and you only unlock new characters to play as after beating them in versus mode so you can see how they're designed and how they work. Versus mode removes the live system completely, and is all about winning columns over your opponent, or ruining your opponent's columns so they score less points. This is the mode where everything you've learned is tested, and where what character you pick and how you build your deck really comes into play. Cards are broken up into different tech levels, and you can build your deck between rounds, kinda. You can only build your initial deck out of starting cards. Any cards above the starting tech level have to be unlocked during gameplay by reaching a specific tech level for that card. You can then add them to your deck, but only for the current game you're in. Tech levels are reset at the start of every game, be it solo or versus mode, so higher tech level cards aren't super reliable since you never know what you'll get. This can lead to early frustration as cards need to be unlocked by getting enough experience points to level up your save file in order for you to be able to put them in your deck or use them at all. And sometimes the AI gets access to cards you haven't unlocked yet. At the start of a game, you can pick what character you want to play as, but you aren't ready to start just yet. All of the characters play a little bit differently, and the big challenge of the game is figuring out how to build your deck to capitalize on your skills. Concrete Jungle isn't an easy game. It gets very difficult very quickly as you test new cards, learn new game modes, and collect new characters. The game can be a bit daunting at times, and I've read that many players don't really like how quickly it advances in difficulty. Personally, I like it. It wasn't long till I was able to understand the game's solo level game modes and get high enough scores to get three stars in just about every level. The real challenge for me was versus mode. Versus levels usually required me to play them multiple times and learn what the AI was doing so I could counter it. There's a good amount of variety in playstyles between every character, and it's easy to do well on a couple solo levels only for your deck to be destroyed in versus mode. If you're unprepared, it can sometimes feel like the AI is cheating. Like I said before, the AI does get access to starting cards you haven't unlocked yet. And being AI, it already knows how to play to the strengths of whatever character you're going against. Like Marina Vazquez. Vazquez plays very differently than any of the previous characters I came across in the game. She focuses on industry and negative land value opposed to positive land value, which I found to be quite a curveball. It wasn't until I specifically sat back, looked through all my cards, and pieced together my deck one card at a time that I was able to figure out exactly how to counter her, and that is how I feel the game should make you have to play it. 
Concrete Jungle does consist of some random elements since cards aren't sent in any order when you draw them from your deck. This makes it possible to lose games by just being unlucky and getting nothing but bad draws. Even so, most of the strategies I came up with were flexible enough to deal with most of the game's randomness. I really appreciate that Coal Power Games added some versus mode levels to the single player, since the game's actual versus mode is local multiplayer only. And that's a darn shame! I would love to be able to play this game against my friends online, but I can understand that indie devs don't have all the cash in the world, and multiplayer can quickly get expensive. Overall, I enjoyed Concrete Jungle and found it to be a fantastic little puzzle game. I do wish there were a few more levels, but I found myself really enjoying the mechanics and playing around with different decks and characters. It's challenging without being impossible, has a nice art design as well as some great music, and there's even a YouTube safe mode in the options menu. If you turn that on, it will turn off all non-free use music. How many devs have you heard of have thought of doing such a thing in their game? The game itself also has a good amount of character with a decent story and voice acting. Concrete Jungle is currently $15.99 on Steam, and I've read some people think that's a little bit too high for what they feel looks like a mobile game. To me though, I think it's pretty much the perfect price for what you get. Thanks for watching, I've Mega Pyman. Please let me know what you think about this game or the video in the comment section, and I'll talk to you guys later. These days. It innovates on the retro ideas, modernizing them for the current marketplace instead of just emulating them, even if it is very obvious what games inspire Mew Crimson Plus. Ice the Lizard has even included the entirety of the original Mew Crimson game.